Hey guys, so this video today is for you if you are struggling financially or if you just love to make some extra money on a monthly basis. Uh, it's about 6.30 in the morning and I woke up this morning and thought, you know what, I'm going to come and make this video really raw to share with you a step-by-step -step process you can take to start to generate some extra money. Now, if you want to make some extra money immediately, the very first thing you need to do is just to go and freelance, okay? Use your existing skills on a platform like Upwork, on all these various freelance platforms, and you simply put your skills out there and someone will hire you and you earn some extra money. However, however, what I wanna show you with today's video is a way in which you can generate um, an income on an ongoing basis by creating your own platform, okay? I want to do this using a blog as a platform that you can create. You can create various different platforms like this, speaking to you here on this YouTube video is a platform by itself. However, I've chosen to speak to you about blogging specifically because I believe it's something that absolutely anyone can do properly and make an income from it, provided though that they know what they are doing, okay? Most people give up because they don't know what they're doing. They get frustrated, they try to do everything by themselves and it doesn't work out. However, I wanna walk you through a 10 step process for how to do this properly. I'm gonna be sharing various resources along the way so that you can literally take the information information I'm sharing today, go away, apply it and get results. Now I'm gonna be very upfront. You will not start making an income from this today or tomorrow, okay? What I'm sharing with you right now will start to help you to generate an income from six to 12 months from today. So you can maybe start doing freelancing, as I mentioned earlier, you know, to generate an immediate income. However, with what I'm doing, we're actually together building a platform that will make you money consistently, including passive income over time. Now, in case you say to yourself, do you know what, Ken, I'm not good at writing, you know, why on earth should I start blogging? I'm completely rubbish at writing. I would say to you, I thought exactly the same thing when I started. Um, the key is not actually to think I'm not good at writing, but instead to think, how could I write in a way that generates traffic over time? And so if you stick around in this video, in step number seven in today's video, I am going to be sharing with you some tips for how to actually remove that fear of writing and focus on writing strate strategically. I'm literally gonna share with you uh, a structure that you can follow to write a blog post in a way that actually helps you to generate traffic, which is what you actually need to earn an income. So do make sure you stick around for that step number seven. Does that sound good? If it does, I'd love you to hit the subscribe button uh, to this video uh, to show some love for the work we're putting into our videos and also like the video whilst you are at it. That just shows you just how real this is. <laughs> my alarm just got off. Uh, it's going to get my kids ready for school. So we're going to try and do this super quickly and super straight to the point. So the very first thing I want to mention before I actually start with step one is I want to, I want you to imagine what's actually happening right now. I'm creating a YouTube video and the only reason this YouTube video and this channel you're watching right now has got to where it's gotten to over time is because I've been consistent in delivering content on this channel every single week. Uh, and this same idea of consistency is what will help you on this journey of creating a successful income generating niche blog. The very first step, the very first thing is to decide on a niche. Now, there are many niches you can start a blog in, but I wouldn't really waste my time thinking about, you know, you know, random niches. I want to be very strategic and ask yourself, what are niches that actually make money? Examples of niches that make money are finance, so personal finance is one of them. Uh, food as a niche is one that actually does very well. So food bloggers, you know, provided they deliver a lot of value and quality and things like that, actually make a lot of money from their, from their blogs. And then there are various other niches that you can look up. Literally just go online, be very strategic in typing, uh, niche, blog niches that make money. Just type that into Google and look at that list for yourself and choose a niche. Be very, very specific. So for example, in finance, you might choose to focus on budgeting and that's your thing. Literally your blog be about budgeting or you might choose to focus on a particular, another particular area, for example. You might have heard the saying, he who speaks to everyone speaks to no one, okay? So the more you speak to a very specific type of person, the more you're able to attract that type of person 
and therefore they might one day uh, get to know you, get to like you, get to trust you, and you might then be able to create various products and things that help them along their journey and giving them value. Okay, so that's the very first step. The second thing you need to do is to choose a name, okay? So people often ask me, how did you guys come up with a name like The Humble Penny? Sounds very cool, sounds very interesting. Well, you can brainstorm a name like that by actually using different words. So sit down, grab a sheet of paper, and think about that niche you've selected. Think about up to 20 different words that actually apply to that niche. You know, so for example, in our case being finance, we had to think about things like, I like the word penny. Um, I, would think, I thought about how we wanted to come across with our videos, thought about our values, talk about uh, the word finance, different things that came to us. And by brainstorming, we were able to put together uh, different words that formed those words, the humble penny. It became a, a neat phrase to which we checked and found you know, that the name was available. There are websites out there that can help you actually do it. Go onto Google and type in there, business name generator, okay? There are, uh, I'm gonna put some links in the, in, the, in the resource section to some of them that might be able to help you. You simply type in uh, a, a few keywords and it then generates up to, um, you know, a few dozen different name options for you to consider. And you can then therefore go and check if those names are available for you to use for creating your blog, okay? So step two is to choose a name. Step three is then to get yourself uh, a domain name and hosting, okay? Um, there are different places you can go to. You can go to GoDaddy, there are all these various companies um, that you can go to to get your hosting, and you can get it with any company you want. Uh, however, I'll refer you to one that we use. Um, I'll link to it below and above. And the reason I'm mentioning this one is because you can get your the domain name for free, but you also get the hosting quite cheaply because we've negotiated a discounted rate for our community. But that link I should mention that I pointed to above or below is what's known as an affiliate link. So if you use that link, we will get a small commission for using that link. I'm just sharing it uh, so you know to be fully transparent. You can obviously go and use any company you want. So that's the third thing, get a free domain name and hosting. Now, the reason you need hosting is because your blog needs to be hosted somewhere. It needs to live somewhere and the content that you create needs to live somewhere. All right, so step number four is to now set up your blog or pay somebody else to do it for you. This is a stage that I see most people drop off at and give up, okay? Now, if you want to set the thing up, we've done a simple tutorial to help you step by step. So I'm gonna to link to it below and above. Just click, follow, and set your blog up following that tutorial. Please get somebody else to help you. Okay, we did an element of that when we started the Humble Penny. I got somebody on Upwork uh, who could help me. You could go to Fiverr, you could go anywhere really, and essentially put a small ad that as you said, says, I want you to help me set up a WordPress website. Okay, and just write some descriptions. You know, you want to create about a few pages, uh, your about page, you know, your home page, your blog page, and so on. And someone will show an interest to help you out. You can get someone, you know, you can get people in different parts of the world. In fact, a lot of people will apply for that particular job. We paid, when we did this, about $200, okay? That was what we paid to help somebody help with the design elements of the blog itself. Because like, I didn't have like design skills and I couldn't be bothered doing it. So I got somebody else to help me. So don't let, don't let not being able to do it be the thing that stops you. Keep your mind in what I said at the very beginning. We're trying to create a platform here that will help you generate at least a thousand pounds per month on a consistent basis. That's what the goal is. So the how is what I'm sharing with you right now. All right, so step five is to work on your branding. Now I've noticed personally that one thing that has set us apart for maybe many other people who've tried uh, creating an online business, like a blog and so on, is the fact that we focused on branding. I think branding matters a lot. Um, it's about what you're trying to communicate pe with people, what people think about when they think about what you do and what you'd be doing in the future. So here I'm talking very simple things like obviously the name we've talked about earlier, a tagline, what colors you want to really focus on for your brand. Uh, aim for around two to three colors maximum. Think about brands you like, think about what colors mean. Go on Google, literally type in what do colors mean and you see what the different colors mean. Um, you, know, you know, red, you know, orange, yellow, blue, they all have different meanings. So you wanna ask yourself, what colors do I want to use to be associated with what I do? You know, what fonts you want to use and things like that, okay? All these things I just mentioned, you can actually create by yourself 
Or remember I mentioned earlier that you could look to get somebody on platforms like Fiverr or Upwork to help you to set up. That person who's setting up your website will actually work with you with some of these elements if they have that particular skill set. Most of them tend to have that skill set. Um, or you can actually tell them, well, actually, these are the colors I'm thinking about using and so on. But the key is to begin with something. And then remember, it's not about being perfectionist at this stage. What you're trying to do is actually to get started and then improve things as time passes. All right, step six is to choose competitors and assess for keywords. This is by far the most important stage of everything I'm going to say you know, on this video. Now, all the things I've said before are extremely important. However, one thing I've found that separates people who are successful in doing blogging and the people who haven't been successful is the degree to which they've identified the right competitors, okay? So every single niche, no matter what niche you're in, whether you're in the tech sector, food, you know, money niche, and so on, each one of these niches have different competitors that exist. Now, if you think about the Pareto principle, what that principle says essentially is the 80-20 rule, uh, which is essentially says that in a given area, 80% of outcomes, outcomes are driven by around 20% of, of the inputs. And this same thing also applies with whether you're starting a YouTube channel and so on. What you find is that when you look at a competitor, you typically find that around 80%, around 80% of all their traffic, all the activities that they generate typically comes from around 20% of their content, okay? What this tells us is that, like, why waste your time guessing what to write about? Instead, what you should do is identify up to five different competitors in your specific niche and go to those websites and, and start to analyze what is helping to give them the most traffic, okay? I'm gonna be sharing some tools uh, later on to help you do this, so do make sure you stick around for the rest of the video. And what you do is analyze that, and each of those pieces of articles that helps them to generate a lot of traffic will have particular keywords that help them to generate those traffic, those bits of traffic. So a keyword is either a word or a phrase. It's usually a phrase, a phrase like make money online, for example. And it's really about working strategically, because if you work strategically, you identify key competitors in your niche and identify key specific keywords that are attracting them traffic within your niche, provided that competitor is not massively bigger than you, i.e. if you find a competitor that's pretty similar to uh, you know, your blog, as well as them writing about things based on what your audience actually wants. So for example, on this YouTube channel, we create content based on what our audience want. You know, we look at comments, we look at what people are posting in our DMs, we look at what people are emailing us about. You know, all these various elements give us clues as to what people want us to create videos about. In the same way, same things actually apply to starting and creating a blog. All those various touch points, in addition to the competitor analysis I mentioned earlier, will give you specific ideas of what types of content you should be creating. All right, step seven is to start writing consistently. I mentioned before that consistency is literally everything. I would say to you right now, you should agree if you're gonna do this to yourself, that you're gonna be committing to this for at least 12 months. If you're gonna do it for less than six months, please don't bother, okay? But if you're gonna do it for 12 months, then you are gonna absolutely do well, provided you follow everything I've shared on this step-by-step -step guide, okay? Now, here's a structure for how to actually uh, start to write consistently. Imagine you've got an A4 sheet of paper. On that sheet of paper, at the very top, I want you to write what is the transformation. For every single blog post, you want to ask yourself, what is the transformation that I want to give people um, you know, by reading this article? So for example, it could be, after reading this article, I want someone to go and start investing, okay? So that's a transformation. And then next, you want to write uh, what is the keyword that I'm focusing on here? The keyword is the is the is the phrase that you're going to be writing this article around. Imagine you're you're writing an entire article around this one particular phrase. For example, that phrase could be how to start investing for beginners, and you'd start to then uh, build a structure. So you've written those two words, and then you then start to think about how do you tell a story around those words. When you write a keyword phrase at the 
in the middle of your sheet of A4 and then start to build out around it. So for us, I'd write an intro. So I'd draw an arrow, I usually do a mind map. So I'd have a section for my intro, what will I talk about in the intro, have a section for the middle part, what value am I giving in the middle, then have a section for conclusion, how will I conclude this particular article. So by planning first, the planning, so you don't just start writing randomly, you actually have to plan on a sheet of paper before you start writing. So intro, middle and outro. And what you want to aim for with an article you're writing is, this is the key psychological element, is that you want to give someone the answer they've come for as well as the answer to their next question. That's the key. So you want to answer their question. So someone's come and said, they want to learn, for example, making this up for our niche, how to, how to start investing. Don't waffle on, just tell them how to start investing step by step or whatever it is you want to create. Literally do it by beginning, middle and end. And then to end the piece, give them an answer for their next question. The next question could be how, uh, what investment platforms could I use making this up again? So I could say, well, actually, uh, just in case you, uh, other frequently asked questions are how to, how to, how to find the right investing platform. And I might then give them an answer to that. By doing that, I've given them, you know, a full picture of what they might be looking for, whilst also making sure that I mention that keyword phrase that I'm writing the article around, you know, a few times, uh, obviously, obviously naturally within my article. And what you should aim for is for an article of around a thousand to 1200 words. And the goal is to write that article and then over time, just update, update that article, you know, by making little changes where necessary to make sure that you are giving people the most up-to-date version of that article. But if you followed that simple structure I mentioned, a simple A4 sheet, uh, and then planned your article, you find that that gives, that takes away the, um, uh, the pressure from, oh, what should I write about? Because you've done the strategic analysis already, but gives you much more of a focus and a structure for how you should structure your article and actually write it. I'd also say you should use Google um, Docs, uh, Google Docs you can find easily on Google. Use that to write your article. Don't write it into uh, your platform like WordPress, for example. Write onto something that means that your work is being saved all the time and you never ever lose your work. And the final thing I should mention is that within your article, also make sure that you link internally. That means link to other articles that are useful uh, within your, your, your blog site that people can read further, that helps to keep people on your platform um, and, and helps to give them even more value. And where you have useful resources that are external to your website from legitimate sources, I'd say also link to those because all those elements linking internally and externally help you from a, an SEO perspective, SEO stands for search engine optimization. All right, so shifting gears, step eight is drive traffic, okay? Traffic is essentially the thing that helps you get the attention. You create very good content. If you create very good content done in a, in a, in a good way, you will get the eyeballs onto that content. And it's through creating that content that you then become monetized, okay? Which is the whole point of us building this. We're giving people value, which comes first, and out of that creating that value, we then earn an income, okay? Now, there are different ways you can drive traffic. Um, one of the most popular ways you can do that is through Google. Most people do their searches on Google for various articles that they're looking for. What you want is to really show up and rank on the very first page of Google, ideally, um, because that's where most people really uh, stop their search. They look at something on the first page, they click, and then they move on, okay? However, to do that, you need to, um, you need to do what's known as search engine optimization. Uh, search engine optimization essentially means that you are optimizing your articles, you're, you're using your articles, your blog posts to answer people's questions and their next question. You answer the first question and their second question. Once you've done that, and that article is written in an authoritative way, you have um, people have a good user experience, and you've obviously targeted specific keywords, as I mentioned earlier. If you've done those various things and literally ticked the boxes, then you find that your article will be optimized properly for search engines like Google, which means that when people search on Google, your blog posts that you are writing consistently on a weekly basis will show up and people will click on them and, and visit your site. Now, I hadn't mentioned this before, but I should mention it whilst I'm here, that um, the number of times you publish an article also matters, okay? Um, the key is to focus and choose a consistent schedule and deliver on a consistent basis. If you wanna start once a week, 
then do make sure you focus on delivering once a week, maybe once a week on a Thursday or Friday, or whatever you think works for the audience that you're trying to serve, and actually deliver, and actually create articles, publish them, uh, use you know the right images and so on, and make those articles available. Um, but what I've noticed is that people who publish, you know, maybe twice a week or three times a week, some people who do publish once a week actually publish a really well written detailed article and uh, you know often referred to as epic content and that's completely and that's a, a great strategy to focus on as well so you can do one audio that if you're short on time then you might want to start with just one article per week that's written really well and offers people a lot of value essentially answers their question like i said earlier and answers their next question now as for uh, resources you can use for this seo part that i mentioned earlier there are lots of really good resources online uh, there's a website called backlinko that you should check out um, that you know it's a brilliant website that he writes authoritatively uh, around search engine optimization feel free to read the articles uh, a second uh, tool that i actually use uh, is one called uber suggest uber suggest um, there are many other tools but uber suggest i particularly like because it's uh, it's fairly affordable and it works really well okay uh, it's by a guy called neil patel so feel free to check those resources out among many other things that exist out there but i'm giving you those those two core references as a place to begin um, and actually have success uh, with your blog. All right, step nine is to build an email list. Now, this is by far one of the most important things you should make sure you do. The most important. Why? Because email is an avenue for creators to generate an income and obviously offer value because there's, if there's no value being offered, there's no way that you know one can obviously generate an income. So you have to offer some value first via email. The reason I mentioned email is that the email is actually something you own. The, the other reason why I really love blogs is that a blog is something you own, it's yours, compared to say a YouTube channel, which is not yours. You know, uh, you could get, you know, if, if things don't go well, you could actually get shut down. Whereas a blog is yours, it's yours for life, you know. So an email is the other asset that you own, it's actually traffic you own. Anyone who subscribes to your email list, is someone who has come into your world because they like you or they they like what you're creating, okay? And they've subscribed for something. We have many people who subscribe to our email list, um, thousands, something like 20,000 people uh, who subscribe to our email list. And the beauty of that is that we can then have a dialogue with those people and and offer them even more value. So you should, very, you should start uh, at the very beginning of your blogging journey, actually creating an email list. We use um, a piece of resource called ConvertKit uh, to do this. It's like a CRM type system, but actually helps to helps you to send emails in autopilot, also helps you to create things called sequences. So I'm gonna link, link to ConvertKit below and above. Again, that link I'm pointing to above, to be fully transparent, is a referral link. We will get a small commission if you use that link. But the reason I've mentioned that tool, you can use whatever you want, obviously, but the reason I've mentioned that tool, because I, I actually use it and I've got um, personal experience of using it and it helps us out a lot. So whilst I'm actually making this video right now, I know there are emails going out to various people uh, around the world on autopilot without me necessarily having to be there. But the beauty of email is that it helps you create ever evergreen sequences of where you create maybe a resource, could be a short course uh, or, or, or anything like that. That means that those things are being delivered to people on autopilot. And by doing that, you might then be able to share various resources, either free resources or paid resources that might then generate you an income on autopilot. To pile up. So definitely building out your email list from the beginning is one of the most game-changing things you could do uh, as a blogger or creator. All right, and step 10, which is the final step, is to aim for your first monetization, okay? So everything we've done from step uh, not to nine has been about building a platform, creating something of value, and so on. Now we wanna try and think about how we monetize that. Now, I would say from the, the get-go, there are different ways you can monetize a blog. The very first way I'd highly recommend you monetize your blog is to begin with affiliate marketing. This is where you promote a resource that somebody else has created, and you promote that resource will generate a small commission from doing it, okay? A bit like I shared a few resources earlier on this video. Um, that's me actually doing affiliate marketing by showing those resources and earning a small income from doing that. Now, affiliate marketing is a pretty technical subject. It's probably the best way. It's both, it's both an art and a science. You can spend a lot of your time online learning about affiliate marketing, and you know there are many great resources on YouTube and on so many other platforms. If you, however, want to learn everything we've learned about affiliate marketing and how it helps us to generate an income, 
There are about 10 different strategies that we share. We've created a course that you can check out. I'll link to it below and above. It's called Make Money Monthly with Affiliate Marketing. Feel free to check it out if you're someone who has an interest. So Affiliate Marketing is the first thing I'd say. Second source of income I'd mention is ad revenue. Now, there are different platforms that help you um, earn an income through ads. You usually need to meet a certain threshold in order to qualify for those ads. Um, so platforms like Mediavine, uh, Ad Thrive, another one called Monumetric, and so on are different platforms with different requirements. E Ezoic is another one. Uh, they all have different requirements uh, for you to meet those thresholds and then start to generate an income through advertising. And obviously the beauty of the ads is that as people read your articles, they come across uh, things known as programmatic advertising, and those ads therefore uh, help you generate an income on a CPM ba basis, cost per million, the mills, cost per thousand impressions. So the more thousand impressions you have people see, uh, depending on your niche, the more income you generate from your blog. So advertising is a second source of income that you could then generate. The third is, and these I'm doing this in order, um, because this is what this is the way in which people typically do this. Uh, the third could then be that you create your own product. And it's actually a really lucrative way because you can then start to reinvest some of that income you've made from your advertising and some of that income you've made from your affiliate marketing. You might then reinvest some of that into creating for yourself maybe an ebook and things like that. I'm gonna to link to uh, below and above to our website our blog over at thehumblepenny.com. Go and have a look at it. You know, we're very, very clear, very transparent. You can see all our resources, all our uh, eBooks, courses, all those things. Have a look at them for yourself. And they might actually give you some ideas on things that you might then be able to create for yourself in your own very specific niche. And then there are other different ways that you can uh, start to monetize your blog. Uh, things like coaching, uh, things like having sponsorship, uh, joint ventures. There are lots, of, lots and lots of different ways that you can monetize uh, your blog. I've gone into a lot of detail about these various ways of monetizing your blog uh, in uh, a resource we created, um, a one-year program we created to help you take control of your finances and grow your money. So it's a three-part program. The first part is take control of your finances, second part is grow your money, third part is help you become financially free. If you join that program, which I'll link to below and above, and go through on a week-by-week -week basis, you get an email once a week to guide you. The reason I mention that is in that program, we'll go into a lot of detail about the different ways that you can uh, you can monetize your blog or make uh, an extra income, as well as you know, lots of different uh, ways you can earn an income from your career and so on. But I mentioned that specifically because it gives you a really holistic picture and it's free. But overall, I wanted to end this video by saying that, you know, this journey might sound like it's a lot, you know, and it can feel like a lot. And in fact, you'll be putting time in to make this a success. But I can pretty much guarantee that if you are diligent with everything I've shared in these 10 steps, and if you said to yourself, do you know what? I'm gonna give this a go, okay? I might not believe I'm good at writing. I might not believe I'm good at tech stuff. I might not feel like I'm young and like, you know, tech savvy, but I wanna give what Ken has shared in this video a go. I would say to you that what you'd be creating for yourself would be a life-changing platform. And what's very interesting about a platform like that is that that platform becomes more valuable over time. It goes up in value over time. The more you create stuff, the more you publish stuff and so on. In fact, think about what I do on this channel, yeah, on this YouTube channel. What I do here is share my knowledge freely. I put stuff out, I research stuff. A lot of my time is spent learning. So I'm in effect getting paid to learn and share my learning. By creating a blog, you'll be doing exactly the same thing. You will get paid to become smarter. And who doesn't want to get paid to become smarter? That's one of the most fun and interesting aspects of actually getting on this journey of creating a blog and you learn how to actually run your own business. If that sounds interesting, oh, and by the way, I should mention from a time commitment perspective, I would say you probably need around two to three hours per week. Okay, that's what you need to put in to make this a success. And I'm quite sure that, you know, if you maybe reduce your time on certain TV shows or on social media, you can actually reinvest that time into making this a success. I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments if you found this video really useful. I've tried to be super transparent and, you know, super practical. And I hope the, the tips I've shared in today's video has convinced you to see this as a worthwhile path to generating an ongoing, consistent income as well as creating a life-changing platform that you actually own for yourself. 
If you enjoyed this video today, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button. That just helps us um, on our journey towards getting to 100,000 subscribers and beyond here on our channel. Just for my own reference purposes, we're currently at 60,516 subscribers. This is so that I can look back one day and see where we've come from. Guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. And as always, in all things, be thankful and seek joy. Take care and bye for now.